What are you doing? Oh, hello there. Who are you? Who are you? Is there an echo around here? What are you doing? Doing? I'm making a rubbing of this old gravestone. Now that I've answered your question, how about answering mine? What's your name? Melissa now. Why? Oh, I just thought if we were going to carry on a conversation together that uh, might as well know who it is we're talking to. My name is John. No, I mean, why are you doing that? Oh, well, this is a hobby of mine. I like to collect and preserve all monuments and gravestones. I even frame some of them. That's a funny hobby. Oh? Well, I think it's funny that you're all dressed up way out here in the middle of nowhere. What are you all dressed up for, anyway? I'm on my way home from church. Why aren't you? I'm on vacation. God doesn't take vacations. <laughs> Melissa, you sure do know how to put a fellow in this place. That's my great-great-grandfather's stone you're rubbing. Oh? Well, I hope you don't mind. I don't mind. I never knew him anyway. What do you collect those rubbings for, anyhow? Well, I guess because I hate to see what's on these old stones lost forever. See, they're weathering pretty badly. Pretty soon, nobody will be able to read them. No one will even know that this is your great-great-grandfather's monument. Monument? Uh-huh. This is a monument. A monument to your great-great-grandfather's life. I always thought monuments were like the statues in front of the town hall. Oh, yeah, well, they're monuments, too, but these are monuments like the soldiers. And a monument can tell a lot about a person's life. Now, take this, your great-great-grandfather's stone. Shame it's weathering so badly because someone put a lot of work, a lot of love into that a long time ago. Now, take this right here, for example. I can't quite make this out. Oh, I know what that is. That's a whistle. My grandfather told me so. A whistle? Uh-huh. Grandpa says his granddaddy was the best whistle carver in the whole county. He'd make one for any kid who'd sit down with him while he carved it. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. See what I mean about a monument telling about a person? Now, what this tells me is that he was a man who loved children, a patient man, a man who would take time to make other people happy. Beautiful. No wonder his family wanted a special monument to his life. I'm glad you're saving it, but why is it fading away? Well, long time ago when they made these stones, stone carvers couldn't cut the harder stone very easily, so they put the soft materials in. And uh, as you can see, they didn't last very long. What do they make monuments out of now? Oh, the best ones are made out of granite, right here in Barry. Have you seen how they do it? Uh-huh. Last time I was here. I'll tell you what. Let me finish this rubbing, and then I'll drop by your house and show it to you. And then while I'm there, I can ask your mother whether I can take you over to Barry and show you how they do it. Would you like to do that? Oh, super! Good. Where do you live, Melissa? First house up the road. Hurry up, John. Okay. John? Hmm? Have you been there? Where? You know, Barry. Mm-hmm, a couple of years ago. You know, I bet some of those old monuments around my great-great-grandpa's are about the oldest ones in the world. Well, I sort of doubt that. In fact, stone monuments have been found that date back even to prehistoric times. I guess man has always had the will to be remembered, Melissa. Why in stone? Well, because it's the most lasting of all materials, I suppose. Like the great pyramids of Egypt and the tomb of Mausolus. It was so magnificent that it became one of the seven wonders of the world. <laughs> That's where the word mausoleum came from. Is it still standing? No, unfortunately. But I thought you said it was made of stone, so it would be permanent. But it was a building, and buildings are very perishable, whether they're made of stone or steel or whatever. 
There aren't any buildings built today that'll last anywhere near as long as a good solid granite memorial. John? Mm-hmm? Does all the granite come from here in Vermont? Oh, no, but Barry has about the finest granite. In fact, there are famous monuments all over the country made of Barry granite. Famous monuments? Sure. The Peace Memorial at Valley Forge is Barry granite. In fact, about all the granite at Valley Forge is Barry. Lots of monuments to famous people are of Barry stone, from presidents to great religious leaders. Actually, Barry monuments are found everywhere, representing all faiths. There are monuments to heroes, like the one in West Virginia, to coal miners who've lost their lives in the mines. And you know something? When John Wayne had the monument to the Green Berets put up at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, he insisted that it be of stone from Barry, even though there's gray granite to be found very nearby. So you see, there is a difference. Wow! Is that the granite they're going to use in the monuments? No, no, that's the granite they're throwing away. That's not good enough to go into a Barry monument. But there are mountains of it. Well, that's part of the difference that I spoke about, Melissa. The people in Barry are pretty fussy about the quality of the stone they use. In fact, only about 15% of all the granite taken out of the quarries meets their standards. The rest of it, well, there it is. Come on, let's see where it all comes from. I'd like to welcome all of you here today on behalf of the entire Rock of Ages Corporation. We are now leaving the Tourist Center, which was built in 1962, and since that time has had over a million visitors. Many of you are probably wondering how all this granite got here to begin with. Millions of years ago, it was a molten mass in the center of the Earth's surface. Geologists are not yet sure what, but some force caused it to start rising towards the Earth's surface under tremendous temperature and pressure. The granite deposit here runs about 10 miles down and in a five mile radius. So you can see we have really only scratched the surface of our supply and shall have plenty of granite for many years to come. You may now get up and look around and take pictures if you wish to do so while I explain some of the quarrying operations to you. The derricks are used to lift the granite blocks from the quarry, to lower down all of the heavier equipment and machinery, and to lower the men to their workstations in the quarry. from the quarry. The first is the jet piercing method. For this cutting method, they pump fuel and oxygen through a nozzle, and a third pipe pumps in water, which is used as a cooling agent. This produces a flame or torch approximately 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The second drilling method used to cut the granite are the channel bar drills or liner drills. For this drilling method, they take drills a progressively longer length and drill a hole about 15 feet deep and two inches in diameter. They do this until they have a series of holes drilled in a row. They then use wedges, hammers, and small pneumatic drills to cut the core between the holes, thus completing the channel. It takes about six weeks to cut a 60-ton block of granite it is cut into smaller blocks weighing approximately 20 tons each, which are then lifted out of the quarry by the derrick.
The granite blocks, when they are taken out of the quarry, are stored for a short time at the base of the derrick which lifted them out. They are then loaded onto heavy-duty Mack and Euclid trucks and brought to either the storage yard or the saw plant, depending on the use for which they are intended. The largest size block ever taken from the quarry weighed approximately 85 tons and was taken out by one of the steel derricks. Looks like awfully hard work to me. Well, I guess it is hard work, but the people who are doing it are experts. But the granite's so hard. I don't see how they're able to make things out of it. It must take an awful long time. It takes an awful lot of talent and experience, too. In fact, right here in Barry, there are more stone carvers and sculptors and craftsmen than probably anywhere else in the whole world. Really? In fact, some of the best sculptors have come here from Italy. Come on, I want you to meet a couple of friends I met when I was here before. Come on. 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 I wanted you to meet Melissa. I brought her here to show her how the granite industry works in Bari. This is Joe, this is Franco. I'm Alicia. Two very good sculptors yeah. from Italy. Yeah, glasses, uh, safety yes. glasses. Oh, know, safety glasses. Yes. What are you fellas doing? Uh, Michelangelo Pietra. Oh, the Pietra. Oh, marvelous. Yeah. There's a diamond and a half a big. Yes. Yeah. This is twice as big as the original statue. That's as, it's in St. Peter's Church in Rome. What are you doing, Franco? Oh, a little holy family. Best oh, very nice. Child in St. Joseph. Beautiful. Well, look, we don't mean to interfere with your work. You go right ahead and we'll watch for a while. Oh, okay. Okay. Sir. religious figures? No, 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 no. Barry sculptors do all kinds of work. Some of it's pretty modern, too. Then they do big carved murals and all that sort of thing. Is that the way all monuments are made? By hand? I mean, regular monuments. For people, I mean. <laughs> yes, I know what you mean. Well, some regular monuments, as you call them, are sculptured. But most often, they're carved by using air and an abrasive. But it's all handwork, just the same. And it's done with just as much care, of course. Come on, let's take a look. Okay, now here's a block of granite you saw come out of the quarries. And uh, from here, we had to cut it down to slabs. This block weighs about 30 tons. It saws about 18 inches an hour, and a block this size will probably take four hours. It seems as if this everything you do with granite takes an awful blast. lot of time. Which is a combination of slug and carbide. We learned that Barry granite's as hard as sapphire and lasts just about forever. Some kinds of cuts are done with diamond saws. We have a gauge that we gauge it some monuments have almost a velvet finish, some are polished like glass. Everything begins in the design department. Here's a standard design that we make available to our customers. In this case here, it's a corner carving. Over here, we have a more personalized design. Well, who originates the design? Well, the family usually does. We learn that a monument often originates from a simple sketch, or even a few notes from the family about the person. And from these, a skilled Barry artist creates a monument which is the most meaningful remembrance of an individual life. And over here, we have our standard design. We found also that personalization could be accomplished by simply adding a bit of special carving or a significant symbol to a monument of existing design. <laughs> like Seth Carter's whistle. Just a touch of something very personal can add great meaning to the simplest monument 
and speak volumes about a person for generations to come. Mm -hmm. John, can we see how they carved these designs? In the plant, we watch skilled craftsmen cut intricate designs okay. into a rubber stencil. Okay, this is the first cut for the sand glass. You've seen the full size being made up. What he's done now is transfer it on this rubber. That knife is very sharp. That rubber is very soft. Right. From there, the stone goes through the first cutting operation. Skill. This seemed to sum it up. How deep to cut, how to move the powerful tool to shape the petal of a flower. Time, patience. The stone is made ready for a second carving. The stencil removed is replaced. Very careful. How do they know how deep to go in the shaping? All right, that man in there just has a natural touch. He knows the best. Second and third cuts develop shape and form, delicate curves and deep relief. A lifetime of experience guides the carver's hand. Can I do one? Sure, go ahead. Thanks. I think you can do anything with that. Rubbing the stone? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll bring it to Jasper. Thank you, Ray. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's all finished now. This is the final step. But we found our stamp of approval was hardly adequate. Barry has its own. Independent inspectors of the Barry Guild examine monuments produced by member plants. Rigid standards must be met before the seal of the Barry Guild is applied. This seal we found is a hallmark which carries with it a guarantee of quality, a guarantee registered with the Barry Guild and universally backed by every Guild member for all time. Before we head home, Melissa, there's one more place I want you to see. I think you'll be interested after what you've seen today. Oh, all the stones are the same color. Mm-hmm. Barry Stone also has a very close grain. This gives it a kind of an even look. It also means it's non-porous, so it won't stain over the years. It keeps its beauty. Another thing about Barry Granite is that its color makes the carving show up well particularly when it's polished. Why aren't more of these polished? Well, most of these are monuments to people who have worked with this stone all their lives in the industry. Maybe they just like it to look as natural as possible. I like the velvet finish too, but it's really a matter of what people prefer. There are so many different kinds of monuments. How could you ever decide what kind to have? Ah, now that's a big question. It's one that most people have to face at one time or another. I guess, like we saw back there in the plant, the best memorial is one that says something about a person or a family it's planned for, like a, like a hobby, like whistle carving, or even somebody's job. Now, right here. Now, what's that? Oh, that's one of those things you see on drugstore signs sometimes. Right? It's a mortar and pestle. The mills are pharmacists. Oh, now here's one I like. See, it's simple, but it's personal, because the name is the signature of the person. Now look, here's someone who's an artist, and her husband's an American Legion member. Why aren't there two dates on here? because those people are still living. Very often, people have their own monuments made and placed before it's needed. Look, here's another. Here's a man who was a mason. That's what that symbol means. And here's someone who belonged to the Elks and the Catholic Daughters of America. The Shrine, the Salvation Army. The fact that they belonged to these organizations meant a lot, and they wanted remembered. 
It doesn't cost that much to have this sort of thing done. Look at this one. That must have cost a lot. Not necessarily. See, that's all flat carving. There's no heavy sculpturing in that. But it certainly does tell a lot about that man's life. I see what you mean. Now, here's one which is shape-carved. It's very deeply cut, as you can see. That's beautiful. The roses look almost real. You know, Melissa, there's a lot of symbolism in monument making. What symbolism? That means certain things have certain meanings, such as the rose. So the rose means love, and it appears very often on monuments. Look at this. Oh, it's completely covered with flowers. Well, there are lots of symbols that are used, and if people are aware of it, they can use that to add meaning to a stone. The lily stands for purity, oak for strength, ivy for friendship, willow for sorrow or mourning. Just about endless. Look, here's a Celtic cross. See how the design is all woven together? Uh-huh. Well, that's symbolic, too. That interlacing stands for immortality. The whole thing is that a little thought put into the choosing of a monument can make it more than just a stone to mark a grave, but really a memorial to a person's life. It may be a real work of art, or it may be small and simple. It doesn't really matter so long as it has a, has a special meaning. For every person is an individual, and there's something unique about every life, something which should be remembered. You know, I saw a cemetery once where there weren't any monuments. Did you like it? I don't think so. Why? Well, I guess, because I wasn't able to tell anything about the people who were there. Mm-hmm. Monuments, how they were made, so how they put the design in, and how they carve it. And Mr. Forsyth, you've been them. so wonderful to Melissa. Why don't you stay for dinner? Well, thanks, but I better not. I've got some traveling to do before dark. I tell you what, I'm going to be back this way a week from Saturday. Now, would you and Melissa like to stroll over and meet me at the old burial plot, say about noontime? Yes, John. Oh, oh. yes, Mother. Yes, okay. please. Well, yes, John. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. Bye. I'll see you then. Thank you. Bye. Mr. Forsythe, how are you? Nice, nice to, see, to you see you again. What do you want us to come here for? I have a little something special I want you to see. What is it? It's oh, a surprise. Well. Oh, come on. Come on, now, you'll find oh, out. Tell me. Here we are. And there. But, but I... I... Mother, you knew I about know, this, I didn't know. you? Mr. Forsythe called me from Barry the day you were there, and he asked me if I'd mind if he had it done. But how? Hmm. Well, the day we went to Barry, I took my rubbing of the old stone and asked him to make a new one exactly like it, only this time of Barry granite. Yesterday, they came up and put it in. But why? I guess I felt that any man who deserved to have a whistle carved on his headstone deserved to have a monument made out of Barry granite so that he'd always be remembered. It's beautiful. 